Hey, how's it going everybody? Brad the Guitologist here. In this video, uh, we're going to go back to basics and I'm going to teach you an essential skill that you need to learn if you're going to be a touring musician or a tech or just a stay-at-home musician to try to save money. And that's to repair your own cables. Uh, what we have here is a very cheap coily cable. This was made by Radio Shack. One of these ends uh, is now bad. As often happens with cords like this, uh, the ends will go bad. There'll be some kind of problem uh, right down in here that you can't get to. And on these, there's no way to get to it. Unlike a, an end like this, which is what we're gonna put on here, seems to work, but got a little bit of a short in this end right here. And there's really no way to fix that. Uh, the only way that you can fix it is to chop it off and replace the end. And this is a very essential skill to have to prevent uh, yourself from wasting a lot of money by throwing away otherwise perfectly good cables. There's nothing wrong with this cable. There's a lot of copper in this cable. And what sense does it make to throw this away uh, when you can simply clip this off and give extend the life of this product? What we're gonna do, we'll just come in here, we'll clip the end off. We have to strip it as well. So the way I do this is I basically, and there are strippers that will do this for you much, much easier. Uh, but if you don't have any kind of specialized strippers, which is what it would take to really do this properly, uh, you can do it e very easily with a belt knife like this. You basically just puncture through the side and you just wanna go real slow. And of course you wanna cut on a surface that you don't mind marring up a little bit if you happen to slip. I might have to go over that cut a second time. I believe I do. And that's common to have to do that sometimes. I'll press a little harder this time. You don't want to press so hard that you cut, that you slice all of your um, shielding. Then you peel it back like so. Cut what you don't need off right down here close. And again, don't don't uh, cut over your antique furniture. You want to cut over something you don't care about. So we're just going to twist this up. We'll also have to strip this back some, uh, and we'll deal with that in just a moment as well. This clamp down here on the bottom is going to be clamped around the uh, insulator of this. The tip of this wire, which is this center conductor, has to go here. Uh, of course, if you were soldering a cable that was a stereo cable, you would have uh, three terminals to solder to rather than just uh, the one and the ground. Uh, but what we want to do is we want to cut the cable now to length. And we need to strip this back. This isn't the greatest cable in the world. The conductor inside of here is, is relatively thin. There's not a whole lot of it, but it will work. Um, and you know, this cable will last a good long while. Now, is this something I would want to take on stage at, um, you know, Nebworth or something like that? No. <laughs> would I want to play Madison Square Garden with this cable? No. But you know, here on the bench or around the house or something like that, this is still a workable cable and there's no sense in throwing away a good workable cable. Okay, so there's that wire uh, stripped back and ready to go. Now we need to strip back some of the uh, insulator wire. We don't need all this much of it. So we'll cut it down maybe about that much. So something about like that is what we need. It's always nice to have something like this. Uh, this is a helping hand. So I can put the cable like so, you can kind of clip it up so it'll be held there. Makes it a lot easier to deal with. So what I like to do when soldering cables like this is pre-tin the leads. I just want to make sure I give that a little bit of a twist. And just put a little bit of solder on that, on that lead and then come over here to the ground and solder up that ground just a little bit and that's going to keep all those strands together so they're not flying everywhere when you're trying to uh, solder this up. This is an essential skill that you need to know if you're going to be a musician man especially if you're a poor musician and you're going out on tour maybe this is the only cable that you got left and, and it has to run your pedal board or something and you know 
you, or you have to get through a show. And my God, the shows tonight, all the the music stores are already closed, and I have to do this on the fly. You know, this is the kind of skills that will serve you well. Okay, something more like this. There we go. I'm going to bend this down just enough that it'll hold that wire so it doesn't fly back upward. I'm actually going to cut just a tad bit more off of that ground. And what's funny is I'm making a very common mistake right here and see if you can spot the mistake before I do. I must have repaired a thousand cables like this and I've probably made this same mistake about a hundred different times. So yeah, so you'll get to learn from my mistake here. Now here's the part where you can really screw up. Uh, you can melt everything together. Uh, you can melt through all of this insulation, this white insulator right here. If you melt through that, you can melt this conductor with this conductor and then you're screwed. The, you'd have to cut the cable back and start again. So what we want to do first is we want to pretend uh, the work, which is this area right here that we have to solder the ground to, that is actually connected up here to the sleeve. That's all of this bit. That's the grounding for this cable. So we're going to put some solder on this first. So we have a base of solder already there for us. Okay. You see that little puddle of solder down there? Now all we got to do is stick that lead down in the solder and give it a little bit of a little bit of heat. And then we're good. And we don't want to move that around while it's setting up. But you'll know it. It'll kind of be a dull color if it's not a good solder. Uh, and it'll be really shiny if, it's a, if it is a good solder. And I'm just going to give it just a little bit more solder. And let that sit up. So now that the ground is there, I'm free to kind of work with this a little easier because it's not going to pull away and move around on me quite so much. One thing I forgot to do already is, well, a couple things actually. Did you notice? <laughs> I forgot this. And also, I forgot this part, which is important. Okay, so this is a good lesson. Let my screw up be a lesson to you. So we'll get that back up out of there. We'll detach the wire for just a second because I have to put this on here first. Just slide it down. Normally I'll have I'd have plenty of room, but this is a coily cable, so I'm kind of getting bunched up back here. Um, but that's okay. I'm still going to be able to make it work. So we'll put this in here, and let's do that again. So we need that helping hand to clamp right there. So hilariously, I just made yet another mistake here uh, and see if you could spot my second mistake before I do. And there we go. You notice how I put solder so that it filled the hole completely and uh, the lead is completely stuck in it now, and that actually looks pretty good. Then we can come back in with some pliers, and we could squeeze uh, this strain relief down, which is what that is. And it needs to be nice and tight, but it doesn't need to be um, to the point where it's pinching the wires or going through the insulator, okay? But you do want it, you know, you do want it good and pinched because that is when you pull the cable, it's going to be pulling on this point and not your term, uh, your uh, connections. Okay, so these are on the wrong order. <laughs> okay, don't do what I did. You should put the shrink tubing on up closer to the tip than this piece, which is where I screwed up. So what I'm having to do here is shrink this down a little bit so I can move this back i'm just shrinking it enough to get to slide that uh to slide this piece down over the top of it like that there we go now then okay so this shrink tubing um i do recommend the shrink tubing uh because it's just going to help insulate everything and hold it also helps hold everything together okay i could use the edge of my soldering iron and just heat all of this up all the way up but i do also have a station that has a heat gun on it so i'm going to use my heat gun but you could use this just the side of your soldering iron and, and do it that way too 
And before you shrink this down, it probably would be wise to test the cable uh, just to make sure that it was good before you shrunk this and then had to undo it, but I'm pretty certain that it's good, so I'm just gonna roll the dice. Okay, so now that that's all shrunk down, this part of the cable is gonna be much more rigid and it'll just keep itself together a lot easier. So the final step is to take these two pieces, this little plastic sleeve and this outer metal sleeve. We'll slide those up, we'll screw this on, and there it is. Now we can test the end, make sure we've done a good job. See that? No more cutting out. And how much copper is in this cord? You know, we'd be throwing that in the landfill for no good reason. This thing will be good, and the, probably the next thing that'll break on it will be this end, and when it does, I'll cut this back, and we'll put another end on it. Then it'll pretty much probably last for a long, long, long time because it's very rare for a cord to break somewhere in the middle. Usually when it does break, it breaks somewhere on the ends. So yeah, hopefully you guys got something out of this. This is a very necessary skill if you're going to be a working musician and if you're gonna try to save money and uh, make your music life as profitable as humanly possible. If you got something out of this video and you appreciated it, please hit like and subscribe down below. And for now, we will see y'all later.